Hey, Indian Creek 8th grade students, it's Professor Blazek, and I'm here today to bring you part one in our series on World War II, looking at the road to war. Now, in order to understand exactly why World War II occurred, we have to go all the way back to the end of World War I and the condition that Europe was left in at the end of that war. Now, there were a lot of Europeans who did not like the Treaty of Versailles that ended World War I. Uh, it was a pretty widespread dislike for that treaty. Uh, the reason people didn't like the Treaty of Versailles was that they were angry about the fact that their countries had lost either land or money or both in that treaty. Because remember, the Treaty of Versailles required that the countries that lost World War I had to forfeit land, had to give up money to help pay for it, and obviously the citizens of those countries were not happy about that. And during the time period between World War I and World War II, especially in these new countries, there had been a lot of wars, a lot of fighting. You know, different countries are looking to get as much land as they had. And the country of Germany in particular, who had been one of the losers of World War I, had been forced to disarm, give up all of its colonies. And so Germany in particular was really feeling ravaged by the Treaty of Versailles and looking to return to its former glory. Now, as we talked about in the last chapter, there was the Great Depression in the United States during the 1930s. This was mirrored by a economic depression around the world during this decade, and this just added to the European anger because they were upset that their leaders were not able to get them out of the depression. They were upset that they were losing jobs or money or that their family members were losing jobs or money. And this economic depression combined with people's anger about the end of World War I allowed a group of new leaders to gain power by offering a better life. And who wouldn't want a better life? And these new leaders were ones that controlled their nations by force and this is a term called a dictator. So they were not looking to take it easy on their citizens around the rest of the world. They were not looking to do anything other than just use force to gain as much power as they could. And these dictators would often use propaganda to influence their citizens and also to bring followers over and gain their support. So we're going to look at a few different countries that had these dictators rise to power, and the first one was Italy. Now, the name of the dictator in Italy was Benito Mussolini, and the political party that he was from was the Fascist Party. And fascism is a ideology that is extremely racist and extremely nationalist. So in other words, they were all about Italy. They did not trust nor want anything to do with anybody else and Mussolini was the leader. There's a picture of Mussolini right there. Uh, and what he did when he came to power in Italy is that, first of all, he banned every other political party. He didn't want any competition. He didn't want any other voices being heard besides his own. He banned free press and other freedoms because he and the government wanted to control every bit of Italian citizens' lives. He actually even named himself Il Duce, which is Italian for the leader. And under Mussolini, every child in Italy was enrolled in a military organization, and they were taught loyalty to the government. So again, Mussolini was just looking to younger Italians, children, and trying to sort of breed them to following him and the fascist party. And after coming to power, he had conquered Ethiopia in 1935, and then he conquered Albania in 1939. So already he's in power. He is using the military force of Italy to conquer new lands and just, again, trying to follow through on gaining Italy and, of course, himself as much power as possible. Uh, another country that we saw a dictator rise to power in was the Soviet Union. The name of the dictator in the Soviet Union was Joseph Stalin, and he was part of the Communist Party. There's a picture of Joseph Stalin right there. Uh, he, when he was in power, demanded obedience from every citizen. He took control of the nation's economy, and in doing so, 
He took over all of the Russian farms, and this actually eventually led to the death of millions of people because he would take the crops from these farms and look to sell them rather than allowing his Russian citizens to, you know, eat them. Um, and when Russian farms would tell Stalin that they didn't have as much product as he expected them to, he would not believe them and he would just take whatever it was that he wanted to and left very little food for his Russian citizens. And this was the reason that there were millions of people who died under his control just from famine. Uh, he also would execute his political rivals and he would send millions of citizens to labor camps, basically anybody who was suspected of not following him or speaking out against him in the Communist Party, they were sent to labor camps, or in some cases, he just had them killed. And he created what's called the cult of personality, uh, where he really just made this ideal of himself out to be the end-all, be-all. He wanted everyone to follow him. He wanted everyone to believe that he was almost godlike. And he made it so that the Russian press and, and Russian art and literature made him the subject and made him out to be this great figure. So he was the subject of songs and art. Uh, he had the history books in Russia rewritten in his favor. And there were even cities renamed for him. And during his time in power, he had his own name written into the Russian national anthem. So that just gives you an idea of how much of a just fanatical, self-centered leader and, and power-hungry leader that Stalin was. And then finally, we're going to talk about Germany. Uh, the dictator in Germany, as I'm sure a lot of you have heard, it was Adolf Hitler, and he was part of the Nazi party. There's a picture of Hitler there. Um, Hitler blamed Jewish people for all of Germany's problems, and this blame of Jewish people is called anti-Semitism. And what Hitler did when he came to power is that he ended democracy and he established a totalitarian rule, which was where a single party has power, they suppress all of their opposition, and they look to control every part of their citizens' lives. So you can see in the word totalitarian, you have the beginning of total. So that just shows, you know, the total control that Hitler and the Nazi party had in Germany once he came to power. Now, what he did was he aimed to rebuild the German military and just restore Germany to the power it had once had before World War I. And in order to do so, he formed an alliance with Benito Mussolini and Italy in 1936. So we had two countries, both in Europe, both with similar goals, forming this alliance that would, in their minds, hopefully lead to gains for both sides. And Hitler also as we talked about a little bit earlier, his final solution to the problems that Germany was having, which of course Hitler blamed on Jewish people, his solution was to exterminate every one of the world's 11 million Jews. And there were a few different things that he did. They were all awful. Um, this was likely the worst single action in the history of mankind against one type of people. Um, and we'll talk about that more as we go on through the chapter. So we talked about a little bit in the last slide about the use of propaganda. This is just some examples of propaganda that was used by Hitler and Stalin. The two of Hitler on the left, you can see uh, there's a Jewish person who is being blamed for the war. It's very cartoony, meant to look very scary, very almost, you know, lifeless. Um, and then the other Hitler piece of propaganda and the two Stalin examples are all just meant to show their leaders in this very positive light, offering hope, offering prosperity, you know, leading the nation, leading the children. And these are just some of the examples of the propaganda used during World War II. Now, there were also, in addition to issues in the countries we talked about before, there were also issues in Japan where the emperor was Hirohito and the prime minister was a man named Hideki Tojo. Now, Japan, too, was having economic problems, and this allowed military leaders to come to power during the 1930s. And what these leaders wanted to do was expand across Asia. And they were really the only country at this time in Asia who had 
this idea of conquering the rest of the continent. And so what they did was they invaded the Chinese territory of Manchuria in 1931 and then moved into northern China in 1937. And then in 1940, they would form an alliance with Germany and Italy, and this alliance would be known as the Axis Powers. So there's a map. Um, you can see Japan sort of in the middle on the right side of the map, and they advance into Manchuria up to the north uh, west of them, and then after conquering Manchuria, they began to invade China. This was the beginning of Japan's plan to conquer the rest of Asia and the Pacific. Now, as Japan was taking action in Asia, Germany also began to deploy their military, and in 1936, Hitler ordered troops into the neutral territory of the Rhineland, and after moving through the Rhineland, he annexed Austria in March of 1938, and he made this a target because his campaign was all about race. You know, we talked about, you know, he wants to exterminate Jewish people. He wants to return Germany to glory. And because Austria was a German-speaking country, this made it a prime target for Hitler's campaign. And after he conquered Austria, his next step, his next target, was an area of Czechoslovakia called the Sudetenland. And so there's a picture of Germany annexing and moving through Austria. Now, Great Britain and France were afraid of war breaking out all across Europe, and so they met with Hitler in Munich in September of 1938, and they agreed to give the Sudetenland to Germany and to Hitler if Hitler promised not to expand any further. They basically said, we will give you what you want, but you cannot, you know, attack any other territories, you can't expand any more, and this is called appeasement. So basically, give what Germany wanted to them as a, you know, trade-off for don't do anything else. Now, Hitler originally agreed to this, and even the Prime Minister of Great Britain went out to say to his people in a speech that they had prevented war, that nothing else would happen, that there would be peace. But by March of 1939, so basically seven months later, Hitler had gone back on his word and conquered the rest of Czechoslovakia. So there's a picture from the Munich conference of the agreement between Great Britain, France, and Germany, which, as we know, did not last for very long at all. So here's a map uh, looking at Europe post-World War I. We have the Soviet Union in red, Germany in blue, Italy in green, and then new countries that had been divided at the end of the war in pink. And then after Germany's early aggressions, you can see the expansion in blue, um, but this would only be the early steps. Now, after he had conquered Austria and Czechoslovakia, Hitler's next target was Poland, but he was a little bit concerned about Poland because the Soviet Union was on the other side of Poland, and he did not want to anger the Soviet Union and Joseph Stalin. So what happened was German and Soviet leaders signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact in August of 1939. And what this pact was was a agreement between the two countries that basically carved up the rest of Europe and said, Germany, you can have these territories and the Soviet Union can have these territories. It was an alliance between both countries. Uh, it wasn't that friendly. I mean, Hitler and Stalin were not close by any means. It was more of an agreement that would do both of them a good service. And so this was a way to prevent their two large militaries from clashing and also allowing both of them to expand whenever they would like. And you could see the political cartoon showing them sort of saluting each other over the body of just a faceless person uh, that they had conquered. And so if we go back to our map, you see uh, this is after Germany's early aggressions, and then after the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, we see, first of all, Italy expanding down into North Africa, and then we see the Soviet Union and Germany basically splitting Poland down the middle. Uh, so that's all we have for this first video in our series on World War II, looking at the rise of dictators and some of the early actions that they took to gain power. Uh, but I'll be back soon with another video. Until then, this has been Professor Blazek signing off.